Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Automotive Tester Certification. We are in chapter 4 talking about automotive specific test techniques and as a part of this we are moving into the second segment of that that is dynamic test techniques. And as a part of this segment we have already covered a lot of topics but in this tutorial we are getting into the last part of it that is 4.2.5 context dependent selections of test techniques to begin with of course uh, there are a lot of certain test techniques which are available of course we have learned a lot from the foundation if you remember your chapter 4 which was the most complicated chapter of CTFL uh, where we had a lot of techniques to understand and undergo about so we have understood that there are black box techniques there are white box testing techniques there are experience based techniques so when it comes to the dynamic executions we generally talk about the black box and the white box and at any point of time if required you can make use of any one of them for example if you are applying a white box testing approach you have statement testing decision testing condition testing and many more when you're talking about the requirement based testing that is black box to testing approaches then you have equivalence partition, boundary value analysis, state transition, decision table, and a lot many other things. Similar way, when it comes to automotive testing, we do have all these uh, different techniques are uh, very well compatible in order to be applied. To see if that is effective, you can definitely make use of them. But if in case that's not applicable, you have your own specific standards to be followed. So as per the ISO 26262 standard, that is volume 6, suggest that tester applies test design techniques depending on the AC level. I think we have covered this in chapter 2 that what exactly AC levels are which is automotive safety integrity level and that helps you to determine based on the level A, B, C, D that which technique will be most uh, reliable and suitable at that point of time. So yes, of course, here are the list of uh, techniques which a tester can decide on based on the AC level that out of these which one would be the most applicable one at that point of time. So of course we have requirement based technique, equivalence partition, boundary value analysis, statement testing, decision testing, modified condition decision testing, error guessing, fault injection and back to back testing. So most of them we have already covered in foundation so we are not talking about them in detail here but uh, there are a few things new which again has been discussed in chapter 4 like requirement based testing, fault injection, back to back testing so you don't have to you know really think about it like what exactly it could be. You have covered this in our previous tutorials. If in case not, please visit the previous tutorials of chapter 4 in order to find more about them or else go to the CTFL of my tutorials to find more about equivalence partition and all. But you won't be having any questions specific to the technique uh, in this certification. Well, to further continue, what is that you know process by which you can actually determine that which technique will be useful. So of course ACL level will determine but not alone ACL level. There are many other factors which influence the selection of the test techniques. So decision on what technique to use depends on all these factors. The number one is state of the art. Now state of the art basically stands for does the technique represents the current state of the art for this purpose. That means if the scenario is related to that, does it apply at this point of time? Like you have a scenario which is specific to the mathematical ranges and equivalence partition is applicable. If you talk about state transition, does it involve a transaction or a process where state changes? So, you know, you just have to look for the applicability. So here, standards like ISO, IEC, IEEE, uh, 291919 and also ISO 26262 can help. The ISO 26262 standard even suggests applicable techniques depending on the AC levels. Deviations from the recommendations of the standard are already discussed in the previous chapter, that is chapter 2, uh, regarding the ISO 262. So if you need any help, you can ref refer them there. Next constraint or the factor to be considered is the test basis, like what kind of uh, information and documentation you have from the specification point of view or what is that you are trying to refer in order to derive these test cases. So if you remember from foundation, we definitely need certain basis. For black box, we have requirements. For white box, we have code or structure. And for experience, we have the past experience. So yes, does the test basis provide suitable test conditions for the technique? For example, the tester can only form equivalence classes if the test basis includes parameters or variables. The tester must be able to group these values into reasonable equivalence classes. 
similar conditions apply to boundary values. The tester can only test those if the value range is defined in a linear way. Okay, so you just have to look for the applicability at any point of time. Further, there is another factor which we can consider here, which is the test level. Can the technique reasonably be used on the test level? Of course, not all the techniques are applicable at every point of time. For example, if you're talking about unit testing, you can make use of equivalence partition and uh, uh, boundary value analysis. But when you talk about integration testing or system testing, state transition decision table will be more applicable or even experience-based techniques will be applicable. So you need to judge that what techniques will be more helpful or beneficial at different test levels. So yes, white box tests are particularly suitable if the source code or internal structure serves as the test basis. In the ideal case, the structural degree of coverage is measurable here. So for black box testing, the test item needs to be available and observable. Like if you don't have the specification being listed in detail, you will not be able to uh, apply black box testing techniques. For example, the testing of an equivalence class or a sensor in a of a sensor in the system test may be more efficient than in component tests because you have everything else connected to the environment and definitely you can have an integration possible and you can see the behavior of that input when you're talking about system. If a test design technique is not suitable on one test level, the system the system tester should should choose a different test level in accordance with the test strategy. So at any point of time, if you think that a particular technique is not applicable here, then look for the scope that at what level this will be more applicable in order to derive the test cases. Because no matter you're talking about automotive testing, but yes, at any point of time, you can minimize your test cases to a certain extent in order to have more effective testing and better confidence on certain scenarios. Well, that's the part one of this tutorial. Of course, we have a last topic going to be completed in the next tutorial, so stay tuned for that. We'll be having the part two to take an example to see everything put together, all the factors, to see how exactly a tester can evaluate the applicability of a technique at any point of time. Okay, so that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.